Thank you, Bishop Greer, for your vision that has gathered us all together for this very important conversation. I was not born black or white. I was born brown. The picture that you see right here behind me is me squawking with a portable PA system in 1974 in Capitol Homes, a large government project complex. I would use the PA system to get kids on our church buses, like the one behind me in the picture. And we would do Sunday school on the buses. We had five such buses that we rotated in 10 parking lots each Sunday for years. We went there because our white church did not allow blacks in our church. But our pastor did not let that deter him and mobilized us, young adults, to go to them. Great years indeed. As a new foreigner, I learned so much about whites, blacks, the system, and mostly about myself. This is my history and how it has influenced the way I think. I was a brown guy driving white Sunday school teachers into the projects while bringing black kids onto those buses every week. As a brown guy, I had to learn both white and black while staying brown. When Brenda, who's my wife now, and I were in Bible college, we were not allowed to talk to each other because of our color or date. The college board, will you believe it, made a ruling that no one will date anyone except of their own ethnic background. On three separate occasions, I was called into the office and threatened with expulsion if I continued speaking with Brenda. Eventually, in 1979, when Brenda and I decided to get married, my own pastor refused to marry us and we had to rent our own church for the ceremony. It was a very divisive time on campus. The week after we got married, we moved to Portland, Oregon to a church job with no pay, just to run from our pain. I write about all that in a, my latest book, detailing it in leadership pain. About 10 years ago, Brendan and I were returning from South Africa while going through immigration in Atlanta. We got flagged for more inquiries and taken into a room with others waiting processing. Would you be surprised that everyone being held in the room was a person of color? The meanness and rudeness we were handled with was terrible. I wanted to complain, but I did not want to be on a list. After a few hours, they called me and I showed them a website. They laughed and let me go. I have concluded that bigotry and prejudice is a plight of all humanity. It could be classism, casteism, racism. It is the notion of superiority of one group of people over another. It can be couched in politics, religion, or other ways. The essence is still the same. I have also concluded that all of that is irrational ignorance informed by sinful and human depravity to be redeemed by divine dignity. I stand before you to testify that I've been embraced by black, white, and every other hue of God's creation. I'm richer for it. Even though those painful experiences seem to poke the heads higher, I have multiple more positive and godly experiences with sisters and brothers of all backgrounds. That is why tonight is important. We are gathered because we all believe in a better tomorrow. We've all had glimpses of the pitfalls as well as possibilities. Tonight is about asking the Lord to strengthen our hearts and resolve to do what we can with who we can to eradicate that which divides us. So help us God. Thanks for watching. You can learn even more about Derek Greer's Let's Talk initiative by clicking one of the videos on the screen.